fanfic critic. I read it, you listen. Ah, well, the good news is I will not be reading any slash fanfics today involving um, a certain critic and her British roommate being lesbian lovers. No, today I'm going to be taking a look at a political fanfic called The Patriots by Armed Sammy123. It's rated M. It's English, it's sci-fi romance, the characters are tally, it has 28 reviews, and it's a Mass FX fanfic. Also, this fanfic is incredibly long, over 40,000 words. So I'll just be reading the first chapter of this fanfic. So yeah, let's take a look at it. The Patriots. U.S. Travel Adversary. This is a message to all U.S. citizens, as well as all alien species such as Quarians, Turians, Salarians, Hanar, Jarrell, Asari, etc. Tensions between the United States of America and the rest of the countries on Earth, as well as their colonies on other planets, have been rising. This is called anti-American activities such as flag burnings, assault against U.S. citizens, murders of U.S. citizens, etc. Also, the countries other than the U.S. have large government-supported anti-alien populations. This transmission shall conclude that entering any country other than the United States of America will be at your own risk. Transmis transmission ended. Okay, I haven't really played the Mass Effect game, but... I didn't think the United States of America existed in Mass Effects. I thought it was supposed to be a deal that the entire Earth was all united as one. Yes, there's still the countries and stuff, but I thought it was all supposed to be like united as one. And why would the other why would the all the aliens in the galaxy care about this one little conflict in this one little nation on an entire planet? Let's continue. I wish a transmission like that went out when I decided to join Shepard back on Haystorm, Tally Zahora thought to herself. A few months had passed since the collector base had been given to Cerberus only for it to explode for some unknown reason. It was also a few months since Tally had been exiled from the Quararian Flotilla, or Flotilla. Her blood boiled as she thought back to when Shepard left her on Omega to die and what he had said to her about he knew that the entire trial was, was a political show and he let her get exiled so she would be tortured with the fact that she could never see the f that she could never she the fleet again. Don't you mean see the fleet again? Shepard had always hated Tally and Quararians for that matter. Okay, that's not the... Well, maybe it depends on how you play the game. Although I haven't played the game, I watched my mom play the game and how she played it. She had to be that Shepard had a strong fondness for Tally. Let's put it that way. But I guess this person didn't like Tally's character when they played through. Since he rescued her in that alley by Shora's den, and the only reason that Tally joined Shepard those two times was because she felt that she needed to repay him for saving her life. In retrospect, she should have seen this betrayal from a mile away. She then thought back to how she had met other Quarian on Omega named Ken, who was on his pilgrimage. She was lucky to meet him because he had found an old freighter of human design, and the two made a deal that if Tally helped him repair it and then fly him whenever he wanted to go and she could keep the ship. It was an offer she couldn't refuse. She had dropped him off at the Citadel and hadn't heard from him since. She currently made a living transport, transporting goods from one place to another. As you can imagine, it was very hard to find someone to hire a uh, Quararian. Tally also would get low-key requests from the flotilla that she would always accept just so she could show that she was still loyal to the flotilla even when exiled. Wait, if she was exiled, why would they still be contacting her? Tally remembered that she was currently on one of those requests as Cal Rigar came up and sat down in the co-pilot's chair. So Cal, why exactly are you going to some place on Earth called China? Tally questioned due to her large curiosity. China is a country with many corrupt officials. 
In fact, we are actually going to a Chinese facility to run by a corrupt general. When we get there, I'm going to transfer credits into his account, and then we are going to talk a take take about, don't you mean talk about a hundred shield generators for, oh, take, never mind, they did mean to say take, take about a hundred field generators for soldiers that can take from 90 to 100 rounds from heavy, ma heavy machine gun before wearing out, Cal responded. How is that possible? There is no technology beside Re Reaper technology that can put that kind of strength in such a small device, Tally exclaimed. Well, it isn't actually Chinese technology, but instead technology made by companies in the United States. In fact, the shield generators were taken from a U.S. storage facility where they would be given to soldiers after going through training, Cal said with a slightly tired tone. Cal, you shouldn't, you still haven't told me how they made technology that advanced, Tally reminded him. Well, unlike the rest of the galaxy, the federal part of the U.S. government doesn't place restrictions on its means of production and most of the state's part doesn't either. I have a few more questions and then you can take a nap, Tally said, clearly catching the tiredness in Cal's tone. Shoot. How exactly does the U.S. government work? Okay, I thought I was reading a Mass Effects fanfic, not a history of the U.S. government fanfic. All I know is that the people elect their leaders, and then their leaders vote on an issue that the states of federal or federal parts have rule over, and that the federal laws and regulations affect the entire nation, and that the states only cover parts of the nation. You'll need to use the extra net for that question. Okay, last question. Why isn't the flotilla sending one of their own ships since this is such an important mission? Tally quickly added, not that I'm complaining. Well, as that transmission there states, violence between humans and aliens has been increasing. So if the flotilla was to send one of their ships, it would be registered as Quararian and will probably be shot down and the U.S. can't send any. Cal stopped himself too late. Cal, why would the U.S. send ships? I thought that I was doing this for the, for the flotilla. Tal... Tally asks suspiciously. Well, the U.S. and the Qu Quararian migrant fleet has had a very well-hidden alliance and the U.S. called in a favor to get those shields back, Cal said with embarrassment clearly evident. Why didn't I know about this alliance? You never had a mission with them, so it was thought best not to tell you even though you were an important Quararian in the flotilla. Cal's embarrassment was starting to subside. The word were brought back the painful memory of Tally getting exiled to both Quararians. <clears throat> Cal, if we already had the co if we already have the coordinates of the facility, then why don't we just forward them to the U.S. so they can take them by force instead of having the flotilla pay for them? Um, if that's supposed to be a question, shouldn't it have a question mark at the end. First of all, the flotilla isn't paying for the shields. It's some rich U.S. citizen who wanted to contribute to the U.S.'s war effort. Secondly, we are going... Use a comma, please. Secondly, we are going to forward the coordinates to the U.S. after we get the shields back from them to them safely so they can send a strike team to destroy the facility. The embarrassment that was in Cal's voice was now gone. Didn't you just state that earlier, so why are you stating it again? Cal, next time, just tell me the truth. It, comma after truth, please, or a period. It's not like I'm going to tell the entire galaxy what's going on. Yeah, I know. I was just following orders from the admin admiralty board. Well, then he, if he was following orders, then he, he had a right to not tell her the truth if his orders were not to tell her the truth. Okay, I'll risk my job for you. <laughs> I would have thought that the U.S. would have asked me to lie to you so that the true purpose of the mission was under less risk being discovered by their enemies. However, I was surprised when they didn't care what I did with the information. A beeping sound resonated from a speaker in the ship and this signaled to tally that they were 5 km or kilometers, I'm assuming, away from their destination. Cal, get ready to land. We're 5 kilometers from the facility. Tally was interrupted by 
anti-aircraft fire that hit their ship, causing the right thruster to explode. Cal, hang on, we are going in for a crash landing. Tally then activated the distress beacon and recorded a message to replay over and over on the distress on the distress that yeah, distress beacon. Mayday, mayday! This is MSV Blackhawk. We are going down. When Tally looked back up, she saw a tree and then only darkness. Five to ten minutes earlier. Command, this is Patriot 1. Do you read me? A man's voice said. Patriot 1, this is Command. Go ahead, Patriot 1. The response was from another man. Command, Patriot 1, 2, and 3. Register a mission success of terminating the HVT with no casualties. We are also one click from the extraction zone. What is the status of the Falcon? The Falcon is 15 mics out. Understood command, Patriot 1 out. I think you need some punctuations in there. Command out. The three soldiers walked for a few minutes before one of them spoke over the radio since their suit speakers were off. Do we really need to know that? Hey, Patriot 1, do you think we'll get some R&R &R soon? Patriot 3 asked. I don't know, Patriot 3, we're on the brink of war and we'll be needing to win it. Patriot 1 responded. All of a sudden, anti-aircraft fire was heard and explosions soon followed. Shit, command, this is Patriot 1. What is... was that our Falcon? Patriot 1's voice was calm and cool despite the fact that their only ride back to base was 100 miles away and might have been shot down. Negative, the vessel that was fired upon was a low-flying freighter label. The rest of the commander of the command officer said was lost as a freighter came screaming out of the sky and hit a few trees. Fuck, get down. Patriot yelled so his fellow soldiers could hear him. The three soldiers hit the ground, missing the ship only a few inches above them. The ship stopped in a clearing a few hundred yards away, and the side hatch blew open a few minutes later with a male quarian walking out with a female quarian in his arms. The male quarian had a red environmental suit, and the female quarian had a purple and black environmental suit. Patriot One instantly recognized both Quarians and was about to call out, but stopped himself when he heard the sound of a vehicle stop on the road a hundred yards away on the soldier's left and the Quarians right. All right, guys, put your cloaks on. We don't want to give away our position if those are hostiles that just stopped on the road, Patriot One said. The three soldiers were using their HUDs cloaked Sim simi simultaneously so that they would not be able to be seen unless a person looking for them was close enough to bump into them or if that person was using infrared optics to see their heat signatures and even then their armor would keep them safe by keeping their thermal energy inside their suits. Why? Okay, get rid of all that lard. Command, this is Patriot 1. The freighter that was shot down was carrying at least two Quararians I identified as Tally Zahora or Zora and migrant marine Cal Rigar. Cal Rigar laid on the ground when he noticed her waking up from her forced sleep. Command permission to extract the Quarians, Tal Zora, and Cal Rigar before any Chinese shoulders, soldiers show up and kill them or worst. Don't you mean or worse? Patreon 1 asked. And if he asked, where's the question mark? Five seconds passed before a response came. Patriot 1, this is command. Hold position until further orders. Understood. Patriot 1, out. By the time he finished the sentence, three Chinese sh soldiers came out of the tree line with guns drawn. Command Patriot 1, three Chinese soldiers just came out of the tree line. Permission to engage. I have a clear shot. Patriot 2 added. Patriots, you are ordered not to engage. I repeat, not engage any and all enemy troops until further orders, the command operator said in a nervous tone. Clearly, someone higher up is giving him orders from nearby, and he doesn't like it, Patriot 1 thought before replying. Patriot 1 copies all over and out. Patriot 1's voice was clearly showing that he was annoyed. The three elite soldiers walked quietly as two of the Chinese soldiers followed the orders of the third one who appeared to be the commanding officer. The two soldiers placed restraints on Cal's hands and legs. They then watched as the two soldiers grabbed Tally by her arms and dragged her to their commanding officer who began eyeing her quote-unquote assets. 
Patriot 1 used his in-suit radio to call Command once more. Command, this is Patriot 1. Are you receiving our helmet cam and gun cam feed? Patriot 1, this is Command. We are receiving your feed. Then you will see that Chinese officer, then you then you see what that Chinese officer is doing is going to do to her. I am requesting permission to terminate the tangos and extract their prisoners. A different voice that Patriot One knew all too well came with the reply. Patriot One, this is General Tula. You are to hold your position until the tangos vacate the area and you are to then escort your squad mates to the extraction zone. Do you copy? The last three words were said in a tone that said, If you so much as argue with me, I'll have your ass. Roger that, General Tula. Patriot One copies all. When Patriot One looks back up, he saw the officer's hand reaching for the release buttons to Tally's mask. Tally watched as the hand came closer to her visor and instantly knew what she had to do. Patriot One watched as Tally used her left leg to kick the man on her left in the place where no man wants to be kicked... Just say she kicked him in the balls. He then watched as Tally used her now free hand to knock the other man on her right out with one swift punch to the face. She turned 180 degrees in an attempt to probably grab the automatic rifle that was left by one of the soldiers on the ground a few feet away. Don't those idiots know not to leave their weapons on the dirt, Patriot One thought. Then, to the surprise of both Patriot One and Tally, the officer acted fast and grabbed Tally's left arm and used her momentum against her, made her turn back around and lose her balance in one swift tug. For a second or two, the surprise look on Tally, the surprise look Tally looked into the officer's eyes while the officer looked back at her. And then the gun pushed up against her stomach and went off. Tally fell to the ground, clutching the wound. Tally's plan had been had indeed been to run to the automatic rifle on the ground behind her and hope that her shields held long enough to kill the officer and the man now on his knees in pain. However, the officer was too fast and had foiled that plan in one swift tug. When she looked into his eyes, she saw only hatred and evil in them. Now she laid on the ground dying, she noticed that the officer was again reaching for her mask and Cal was yelling her name but, those noise, but the noise seemed far away. Tally knew she was too weak to fight anymore and prayed for death to take her to be with the ancestors and away from the hell that was her life. Patriot One watched Tally hit the ground in slow motion. Another life I could have saved, Patriot One thought to himself, however... Yeah. However, when he saw the officer going once again for her mask, something inside him snapped. Fuck orders. Three, go, untie Cal. Two, take out the guy who got kicked in the balls on my mark. Patriot said and not ordered. Patriot one, I gave you an order. General Tula barked over the radio with anger clearly in his voice. Sir, I am respectfully disobeying that... Disobeying that order, Patriot One responded as calm and cool as ever. Then before General Tula could protest, Patriot One said the fatal word, Mark. It all happened in a second exactly. Both Patriot One and Patriot Two file, fired a single suppressed round, each at nearly the same time, since Patriot One was slightly quicker, as always. Of course, by the time the rounds were fired, the officer had his fingers on the release button on Tal's visor, but he would never see her face as a round entered the back of his head with enough force that caused his head to explode like a melon, except that instead of bits of melon coming out was a rest mist and bits of skull and brain matter. Well, yeah, we figured that. No, everyone's head is full of watermelon, so when your head explodes, you explode with watermelon juice. The man on his knees fared no better as the other round entered the side of his head and took the top part of it off. By the time the bodies hit the ground, Patriot One was already decloaked and halfway to tally. <sighs> okay, we're almost done with this chapter, thank God. Tally was still alive and awake for that matter. At the monster in front of her, pressed down on her release buttons for her mask when all of a sudden his head exploded and the twitching body landed next to her. Then a figure in black armor that reminded Tally of Shepard's old armor before the first Normandy was destroyed, except that there was a knife in a, in a seath facing, bl facing blade up 
on the upper left side of the armor portion covering the torso and the fact that the armor was completely black was also different from Shepard's old armor. Well then it's not similar to his armor! You just completely contradicted yourself there! The helmet was also different with a T-shaped visor which was blacked out and where the mouth of the person should be was a circle within a circle device which reminded Tally of her own device by her mouth but this device didn't light up when the person spoke Tally would soon learn. This person likes to have a lot of filler, don't they? This could have been a lot shorter if it wasn't for all the stupid filler like this. Then another person in the same armor and helmet except for a pouch Okay, then it's not the same armor then. Except except for a pouch on the person's left leg came up and opened the pouch. The person took out a needle with clear liquid in it and an IV which she gave to the first person. The, yeah, the first person gently lifted Tally's head up and moved her veal back and up to reveal a slot to place medication without exposing the quarian inside the suit to the air outside. Wait. Only quarians know about that slot. How do they know about it? Tally thought as the person emptied the clear liquid into her blood screen, bloodstream, then pressed the IV into the slot before putting her veal back in its place and slowly led her head to the ground. The first person spoke, revealing that he was a man, and he said, Don't panic when you become sleepy in a few seconds. It's not death. Just a sedative I injected you with. He quickly added, don't worry either, I won't let you die on my watch. Another armored person appeared with Cal next to him who looked at Tally and then at the man who said she'll live. And with that, Tally slowly became unconscious before she could realize that the man wasn't speaking any earth language but instead was speaking Kellish. Okay. We are done reading the first chapter, and I am so glad that I'm only doing a summarized review of this story because just reading the first chapter was giving me a headache. Let's read the author's note. Author's note. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the first chapter. Also, please review so I can make the next chapter more enjoyable. There will be Tally XOC in a very long time from now, you perverts. So you'll have to wait and suck it up. Lastly, I cannot describe the helmets enough to my liking, so just imagine an ODST helmet combined with a Quarian helmet, so it's an ODST helmet with that circle device by the mouth area. We all could have guessed that. Update, sorry it took so long to get this back up, but I wanted to add more to this chapter. So this chapter was actually shorter before? You probably should have kept it the way it was before, buddy. But it never worked, so I fixed the two fragments that needed fixing and just posted it. Expect chapter two to be better written but have no action sequences. Well, we're not going to be taking a look at chapter two because chapter one was enough for me. If you guys want to check out the rest of the story, go ahead. This is what I have to say about the fanfic. It doesn't make any sense. Why, why the heck would all these aliens be caring about what's going on politically on Earth involving the United States. In fact, I assume that in Mass Effect, the United States didn't exist anymore. Well, well, maybe it does, but I highly doubt the issues that the United States have today would exist in the future when Mass Effect is supposed to take place. It just doesn't make any sense. And another thing that annoyed me about this fanfic was the lack of punctuation marks or more appropriately the lack of commas. There's a lot of sentences that were really run on that needed commas in there and this person does not appear to know how to use a question mark. And the lard. There was way too much filler in here. Just way too much of it. I mean, spending too much time describing what the helmet looks like? Who cares? Oh! Oh, that suit! It looks exactly like Shepard's, except this is different, this is different, this is different, this is different. Well, guess what? If all those things are different, then it's not the same suit, and it wouldn't look the same. How about you say it reminded her of Shepard's suit? Just say it was similar, but not exactly like Shepard's suit, without going into massive detail about what every single thing that's different about it. I don't know. Frankly, to me, the fanfic was boring. It went on too long. And you really should not be right, I mean, inserting politics and stuff in here, seriously. 
and it gets worse as the story goes on. Okay, it gets a lot worse, and I'm glad I didn't have to read the entire thing out loud. Yeah, so I'm the fanfic critic. I read it. You listen. I'm going to play some experience on the Connect. <laughs> It's a little too light in here to do the turning off the light thing, so I'm just going to have it fade to black. Bye!